Hey, what's going on? It's Matt Plapp, and you, my friend, are here for the first ever episode of my new video blog, I Know Matt Plapp. And funny topic, but here's where it comes from. Some friends of mine told me at a convention recently that because they know me, they get to know a lot of my connections. And a lot of my connections, like this man sitting next to me, have a lot of great information. So that's what I want to talk to you about today. I'm here today. Figure my first guest better be the best one ever, and I'm fortunate that I have the Michael Jordan of sales and referral marketing in my life, my father, Dwayne Plapp. What's up, Dad? What's up? I, I know Matt Plapp. <laughs> he knows Matt Plapp really well. He created Matt Plapp. So today our topic and what this show is about is bringing content to business owners, to especially restaurant and brewery owners, how you can do more business, how you can sell more beer, sell more food, put more butts in the seats, and there's not a better topic than relationships. And I'm going to give you an example that I'm going to talk to my dad about his four key steps to this. I've got a client with a couple restaurants in a couple different cities. The one city is where they're located at, where they're headquartered, and they have community connections. They're in chambers and visitors bureaus. They're an organization for all the restaurants and hotels. And by that, they get a ton of business in their restaurant and brewery because of all those groups. In another city, a few hours north, they don't have those connections. They don't have a person in their restaurant and brewery that's out in the community. The people in the restaurant are in the restaurant during the day or night and at home or on their free time outside of that. So guess what? They don't get that business. So, Dad, what is the way for a restaurant or brewery to solve that? If you owned a restaurant and you, you're, you, your managers, general managers, what would you be doing to solve that problem? Well, the first thing I would do, I would call it mastering my connections. First thing I would do is I'd be getting out and getting visible in the community so they actually know who I am. Second thing I would be doing is I'd create some effective communication so when my people talk, other people are listening and they are actually effectively getting communication and people are listening to what you have to say. The third thing is this, getting mastering your connections is all about relationships. So the stronger my relationships, the better my connections, the better opportunity I have to grow my business. And the fourth one is this, and this is probably the one that most businesses have a, have a tough, tough time with, and that is strategic activity. We sometimes just go out and do a lot of activity, but there's no strategies involved. So if I'm going to a certain place, I'm going to a chamber, who do I want to meet? Okay, what do I want to accomplish when I get there? Has there been any planning when I get there? Who's the people that can help me? So guess what? I, I go to a lot of meetings or I go online, I go to go to meeting. Well, who's there? Well, guess what? Nobody who's ever going to come to my restaurant. So why did you go to there? So strategic activity is huge. Okay, so let's back up. Let's go to visibility, number one. So I'm an owner of a restaurant and brewery. How am I creating visibility for myself? Are you talking about advertising? Or are you talking about out in the community? Well, there's two main things today. Uh, when I had my businesses, uh, when I was running my retail store and running my insurance business, the main way of visibility in those days was Chamber of Commerce was okay, Rotary Club, Lions Club, different organizations where you got involved with and, and went to different restaurants and you went to different places and got out and about. Today, you also got social media. So you, not only am I, do I meet you at a chamber, I then go home, I maybe put, befriend you on Facebook, I connect you on LinkedIn, I start doing, a, I, I, I maybe tag you on some things, I get pictures of this, that, the other thing. So now guess what? You're now top of mind and I'm top of mind on you. By using that as a, as a, a, a benefit. See, when I had my businesses, there was no Facebook. And so consequently, all the visibility I had, I had to create it myself physically by being out there and about there all the time. Now you can you can take and use that and then you accentuate it by adding to it by the Facebook, by LinkedIn, by social media. All the different avenues now are available and they're free. It's amazing. They're free. Yeah. And all you got to do is you just got to go do it. My And it may only take you for 15, 20 minutes a day. But guess what? Every time I post something and I'm friended with you, you, you see that. And every time I do something, I tag you or I share something. All those things, everybody, every one of my friends see me. And guess what? I'm now out and about. I'm going to a chamber meeting or I'm going to a rotary meeting or I'm going involved with a home builder association or I'm going, I'm out and about or maybe I go to a theater, I go to a restaurant, I go to a ball game. I start seeing people. One of the key things one of my my clients told me the other day was this. The one thing, Dwayne, you've taught me in the last three years of coaching you is this. I now, when I go out, I walk into a restaurant, I walk into a chamber meeting, I walk into it, I look around to see who I know. And I start communicating with those people. Most of us, say, before, I, if I went to a restaurant, I'd walk in, 
The waiter would see this, and I wouldn't look around and wouldn't meet anybody. Yeah, you. Uh, I think you were the epitome of that as a kid. When we grew up, I always thought mom didn't like to cook, but it wasn't that. It was like you liked to sell stuff and like the network. And so we had a routine of Mike Fink's and barley corns, a lot of different restaurants. And it was kind of funny because I tell friends of mine the story all the time is that we'd show up at a restaurant and we'd be sitting there for 15 or 20 minutes, me, mom, and my brother, and dad would be working the tables. And I always thought, what is this guy doing? He's always walking around talking to people. Well, he had a method to the you know, the method to his madness. He was out and about doing things. Now, you mentioned something, Dad, that I think a lot of people fail on. I see this. They go to a chamber event, and I've seen friends of mine do this. I've done this. You go there, and you don't have a plan. Because I, you said something one time in your, one of your speeches I heard was that a lot of these events publish who's going to be there. And so talk about maybe what you, what, what you would tell somebody. You're t- talking to the general manager of a brewery. And he's trying to get out in the community, and he's, he's looking to get more parties for his event. He goes to a chamber event. What are the top two or three things he should be doing? Well, the first thing you've got to do is this. If I'm going to go to a chamber event, okay, the first thing I'm going to do is going to Google the chamber or pull the chamber's website up and see the event, and they may have published who's coming. All right? Now, I look at this list. Who do I know is coming? Who do I know that I can connect with? Who do I know that can introduce me to some people around? Because guess what? If I can go to an event, okay, I do this all the time. I'll see somebody I know. Hey, how about introduce me to that person over there? I don't know who they are. So now that person, well, guess what? When they introduce me, what's the thing everybody does when they introduce somebody? They always say, well, that Matt Platt is, Platt is a really unique guy. He does a great job. He's going to be a good person for you. Guess what? They just got a testimonial. You just got a testimonial by somebody who introduced you. So guess what? You sit there before you get there. You decide who you want to meet. Now, if you don't really know anybody, then you go, you pull them up on LinkedIn. Look at four or five different occupations on LinkedIn. What occupation do you want to meet that night? Who can help you grow your business? Who do I want in my restaurant? Okay? Identify that target market. And then when you go on the website, okay, and you start looking at who's going to the event, now you got a pretty good idea. One of the worst things you can do is get in your car after the event, and since they're all brand new cars now, they got push button starters. You get in your car, you push the starter and go, Boy, did I waste $55 on that event. Why? Because you didn't go in having any idea who you wanted to meet and then had any plan how you are going to meet them. So the key to the first thing is this. Get yourself organized. Find out exactly who you want to meet and how you're going to meet them when you get there. That way, guess what? Makes it goes a lot smoother. And then the other thing is this. This is the other big mistake most people make. They go around and shake everybody's hand. They get conversations with everybody. They hand out their business cards to everybody. Guess what? And I start handing out my business cards to everybody. That's the same as code calling. I hate code calling. Okay, so I got I to gotta tell if I told you this. So this is where the I know Matt Plapp joke came from originally was I was at an event in California, and I'm with a bunch of my friends, and we were talking about how we get friends. We're in a group of 700 of us in this marketing uh, mastermind, and there's about 100 of us that are really close. And we get friended all the time by people who we don't know. And people kept walking up to me at this event saying, hey, Matt, I watch your videos. I know who you are. Uh, I'm going to friend you on Facebook. And one guy jokingly said, I know Matt Plapp. And he said something that cracks me up because myself and a buddy of mine, Brendan, were at a chamber event six, seven years ago. And I'm not making this up. This guy walks up to me and Brennan, and we're talking. And he answered, hey, how you doing? And we get to talking. And he didn't, I didn't, I guess he didn't say my last name, but he's like, oh, yeah, I'm really good friends with Matt Plapp. And he says it to me. I look at Brennan, and Brennan looks at me. We look at this guy. And, okay, and he leaves. And I look at Brennan, and I said, you know him? He goes, no, I thought you knew him. I go, I didn't know him. And so <laughs> I thought, okay, either I'm on a prank TV show where this guy is uh, name dropping the wrong person to the actual person. So that's where the whole I know Matt Plapp joke came from. So that, that hits home because we've all been to that event where people run around and shake hands and, and make get business cards. But something you said hit home with me because this past week I was in Denver for a show. And I was out there as a guest of a really well-known restaurant marketing consultant. And I'll tell you what was amazing was I didn't know anybody there except her. And I went there with a couple ideas like you have, like you're talking, like you taught me growing up. But Becky, everybody that walked in her booth, oh, my gosh, you got to meet my friend Matt. Here's what Matt does. And next thing I know, the conversation was framed so much differently because she transferred the trust. Now, all of a sudden, we were friends. And I had a lot of great conversations that had I walked up to them cold. They not want to talk to me. It, it gives you instant credibility. When, when someone else introduces you, and what you just said transfers the trust, that person knows that person. 
So they don't know you yet. So when that person gives a testimonial, introduces you, they basically transfer they tr their trust with that person to you. And so now guess what? You have instant credibility. And it's almost like many times you hear it said all the time, you know, how do you know an expert? Well, he's a speaker that's 50 miles away. He's the expert, okay, because he's 50 miles away from everywhere. But guess what? Same thing. All of a sudden, by getting my that, that, that introduction and a transfer of trust, I become instant credibility. Now, all of a sudden, they're listening to what I have to say. And I have an opportunity then at that time to find out a little bit about them. Now, you bring up something good there. I think a lot of times people go to events like this with their hand out. They, they're going there to get business versus going there to make relationships and find out about those people because I think that's what's important a lot of times is that it's just like going to networking events. Like we're both in uh, referral marketing groups and I don't go to my referral marketing group and mine's a B&I chapter. I don't go there standing up every week saying, give me business. I go there to find out who the people in the room know and how they can help me get to know them. When you go to events, is that also a mistake you see that people are there selling, selling, selling? Well, that's why my program's called Sales Without Selling. My whole goal is you go to an event to attract, not to attack. And the reason why is this. If you went there, if you went to the event, did you go to the event to get sold to? No. So why are you selling to somebody else? It's, it's, it's crazy. So my whole thing is you educate people and you funnel the conversation down as this. One of the key things most people have a, have a tendency to do is they forget they have two ears and one mouth. The whole idea of two ears and one mouth is I go there to listen, okay? And so God give me one mouth so I talk less and listen more. By doing that, guess what? When I go to an event and I'm now going to find someone who's going to help me, I can't really evaluate who they are if I'm doing all the talking. If I'm doing all the talking and they're, not, and they're sitting there listening to everything I say, guess what? I got no idea when I got in my car if that person could even help me because I hadn't, didn't have a chance to get any questions about anything about them, can't evaluate who they are. And so my, one of the things I have in a lot of my slides and my presentations is this. How quickly can you find out whether somebody is there to help you and you, they can help you? How fast can you evaluate that person? And the key is this. If I'm only going to talk to you for three or four minutes and I'm doing all the talking, when I get in my car, I have no clue who helps me. The other thing I'm going to say is this. And this is a big problem most people go. They go to a networking events to grow their business. Well, you do. But guess what? One of the easiest ways to grow your business is to help somebody else grow their business. Get a, I always go there to look for ways to refer people. And so I do a lot of introducing because I happen to be fairly well known in the area. So when I go to places, I actually go there to introduce people. And guess what? It comes back to me a thousand fold. Because now I'm not selling, I'm educating, and I'm helping everybody else grow their business. And when I do so, it's like the Bible says, okay, it comes back to you a thousandfold and always does. So uh, you said something there that it's hit home with me before because I've went to events and I've had a conversation with somebody. And it's human nature when you have the person in front of you that is a good prospect for you and you get in sales mode. And you shake their hand five minutes later and you leave and you're like, <laughs> did that guy even talk? Did I, did I ask the right question? So that, that's something you've got to avoid, something you've got to do. But what, number four on your list was strategic or, activity. Now, so extreme, explain that. Is that the worksheet and kind of – I have a, I have a worksheet. Your goal is to get 200 points a week. The whole idea of the worksheet is that I've got – on the worksheet, there's all kinds of things that, that you can do to get, to get visibility. And what you want to do is you're, it's all strategic. So I'm making, I'm making happy calls. Happy calls are when I talk to somebody, keep my name in front of them. Okay, maybe I'm doing one-on-ones. One-on-ones, we sit down with someone for an, offer, for an hour at a coffee shop, and you talk about each other's business and how you, how you can help each other. Okay, maybe you're doing some social media, or maybe you're doing a website, or maybe you're doing some, a blog. Uh, maybe you're passing a referral. So on my, on my activity sheet are all these things. And again, it's all geared to your target market. So strategic activity. I don't want you helter-skelter. Give you an example. Since we live right here in northern Kentucky in Cincinnati, I happened to coach a guy about five years ago who lived up in Mason, Ohio, which is about 25 miles from the border of Ohio and Kentucky. And so we're talking, and he says, I'm, so what things, what groups are you involved with? He said, he was a financial advisor. I said, what groups are you involved with? He says, uh, I'm in a BNI chapter in northern Kentucky. I said, where's this BNI chapter? He said, oh, it's Florence, Kentucky. I said, let me add this up. I said, that's about what, uh, 45, 50 miles away from where you're at? He says, yeah. I said, what is the, what is the chance that you're going to get a client in northern Kentucky, okay, 
when you're up in Mason, how many people, how many financial advisors do I have to pass from Florence to Mason to get to you? I said about 1,200. Guess what? Your opportunity to get a, a, a referral from somebody in Florence is, is nil. So why are you networking there? Network in, in Mason where that's your target market, where, you're visib where you can create visibility easy, create that energy. You're not creating any energy at all in Northern Kentucky. And guess what? You're never going to get a referral. And in a year, you're going to be out of business. It's, it's funny you mentioned that exactly what he just talked about is what I tell people with regards to social media advertising. Go where your people are. Go where your prospects are. In my dad's case here, this gentleman needs to be in Mason more. Well, I heard an example the other day where a guy who was a sales trainer, like my father, and he knows that people who follow Grant Cardone, a huge sales trainer nationwide, would be good prospects for him in his course. So when he runs his Facebook ads, he targets Grant Cardone's followers. It's pretty simple. He's going where his people are. And so it's the same way there. You can take a lot of this stuff and transfer it back and forth. So something you said also that stuck out to me, Dad, we're talking about this is, I have a lot of breweries as clients, and I have a lot of brewery owners that are constantly contacting me looking for advice on selling more beer. And that's probably one of the easier conversations when you're at a networking event that a lot of businesses don't have sex appeal. You know, people don't, you know, the life insurance people, the insurance people, the attorneys, the accountants, there's not a whole lot of sex appeal there. But when you walk in and you're unique and you're having a conversation and you're from this brewery, I can bet a lot of people probably have a love affair with beer, and that's going to be an easy conversation. Actually, today, if you go to a networking event and they happen to have beer there, which is 99% of all networking events. Matter of fact, I've been doing networking for 50 years, and I have only about two times in my life have I not seen a beer at a networking event. So how, many guess times, what? how many times have you not passed on one? <laughs> that's a good point, too. <laughs> the thing is, okay, you go up to the beer, the person who's got the beer, and next thing you know, you're talking to the person next to you, and you've got a huge discussion of what beer you like, especially with today, with all these different craft beers and all these different things. Matter of fact, what my favorite right now is talking about, I don't drink it, it's called flat tire. That It's not really called flat tire, but it sounds like flat tire. And whenever somebody orders that, we get into a discussion for 15 minutes about beer. Well, guess what? If I happen to be in the beer business and I'm at a networking event with beer, guess I, it's home run. It's almost like home run derby. That's like watching uh, Aaron Judge hit a million home runs at the home run derby. That is unbelievable. So, parting uh, parting comments here. What is one or two things you would tell a general manager, an owner of a business? Obviously, they have to get out. They have to get to networking events. Uh, but what would you say as far as people that aren't comfortable with it? that have never done it before, how to get out of their comfort zone, maybe your one or two tips to exit this thing. Well, the thing I always tell when I do things for different different uh, workshops is this. In networking, the key thing is, okay, is you want to be comfortable. I hear all that, well, I'm a wallflower. I can't get comfortable. Well, guess what? Here's what I want you to do. The next time you're at a networking event, the person who's hosting the networking event is usually sitting at the front table, handing name badges out, having your register, and if you got to pay, or pay you get, you got the credit card machine going, and you're paying. Well, guess what? Stand in the middle of the room, and a person walks in. Bathrooms are over here, the bar's over here, and the food's over here. You're now the host. You do that four or five times, now your adrenaline gets going, and now all of a sudden your attitude changes, and guess what else happens? I all of a sudden see the person I'd like to meet. When you start to walk up to them, and they're talking to four people, I call it the Red Sea Splits for one reason. They already even perceived you're the host. So if I walk up to you and I'm the host, you, I probably want a door prize, or I might I, I might have something important to say to you. So everybody stops what they're doing, and you, they, the Red Sea splits, and now I guess what? The floor is yours. It's a home run. I Everybody I've ever had do that comes back to me, Dwayne, it works. Because guess what? Changes your adrenaline flow, changes who you are, and all of a sudden now you're a person of interest because you're the person that's the host in everybody's eyes. And the, uh, the one thing, too, which is similar to our seating arrangement here, a lot of these videos I actually do uh, with people in other cities, we're both on a computer, but you and I are sitting in a manner that we're open to the camera, that if I'm at a networking event, I don't want to be facing you, I want to be open so a third person can come up and join a fourth person, so make sure you always have body posture, but I think that's about all we've got, we'll wrap it up, and uh, you know, this whole process came about because I want to deliver content to you business owners, marketers that can help you grow your business. 
And the whole name, like I said, I know Matt Plapp came from the fact that now you know me because we've met, you've watched my videos. But because you know me, you know great guys like him. And that's my goal is to bring great people like my father. It's going to be hard to match this guy. But bringing people on here that can give you knowledge and expertise and help you sell more stuff. Two things. Get visible and don't sell. Visible, don't sell. That's all we got. Dan, who do you know? I know Matt Flapp. There we go.